Place of the Rising Sun, Mpumalanga, known for its natural heritage and beauty, has on the 22nd of February 2019 welcomed politicians, the public, and traditional leaders to its state of the province address at the Mbombela Legislature. Premier Rifilu Mtsweni, the first female premier of Mpumalanga, delivered her maiden and last date of the province address for this administration leading up to the national elections. Today's highlight special will reflect on the state of the province, the challenges and achievements of the province by the current administration. This state of the province address comes at a time when we approach the 25th anniversary of the advent of our democracy. Whilst this is my maiden sopa speech, Madam Speaker, it also marks the end of our term as the fifth democratically elected government since 1994. A five-year term that has been characterized by mixed socio-economic performance, it was certainly not the best of times, nor can we be overly pessimistic and say it was the worst of times. There were times of slight economic improvement only to be eclipsed by declines, which in some instances took us into technical recession, only to be immediately followed by buoyant growth. However, as a province, we have been fortunate that when the country was experiencing consecutive negative growth quotas, our economy remained in marginal positive territory despite contraction in the mining industry. What this means is that because of robust performance by some of our industries, Mpumalanga was paid, was paid off a technical recession. The 25th year of existence is usually associated with the transition from adolescence to adulthood characterized by economic independence, exploration, self-determination, being more realistic and pragmatic. Some would describe this period as coming of age. The question that begs to be answered is, have we as a province reached the transition period? And if so, what level of socio-economic and political development has our young democracy achieved during that period of coming of age? In addition, what have we accomplished over the past five years since the last mandate our people bestowed upon us through the ballot box? It also demands that we face the realities of what we could not achieve during this term of administration. We put particular focus on programs that will impact on women, children, orphans, young people, people with disabilities, and the poor. We developed a range of laws, policies, and programs to ensure increased representation, ensure the provision of basic services. We've created jobs, reduce poverty, eradicate violence, promote and protect the human rights of all our people, in particular, the most vulnerable. This is one of many points highlighted in the Premier's speech in spite of the community protest for service delivery just days prior to the address. Following the speech, we talked to some key personnel who provided particular detailed feedback of the Premier's speech, the province's main economic contributors and mixed socio-economic performances. I'm just picking up that one. You talk of water provision. Indeed, the provision is very high. You talk of the basic services in uh, community amenities, such as schools, clinics, etc., etc. 
all these have been prioritized and we are not saying that there are no backlogs or that there is still no need but we are saying we have made quite an advance we have advanced a lot in terms of those but over and above that we have not neglected wholly the maintenance of existing infrastructure for argument's sake you talk of some of the roads that have been that have been done. You talk of some of the services like the sewer services and so forth. There are challenges, we agree, but indeed strides has, have been made. But also if you come on to the human relations side, on, on the societal side if you like, um, the, the, the matter of social cohesion, people may not easily pick that up. But indeed, we are beginning to come together as a country, as the citizenry. One of the major negatives that we have is the fact that we are not as yet patriotic as we would have wished to be. It is simply because we have pockets of communities and we do not see ourselves as one. When you deal with the economic issues, it's about facilitating. Uh, so that other sectors they can be able to strive. So it will always be difficult to touch and see the tangibles of it, but what you can only see is how the other sectors perform and how other related indicators uh, link to your business community, respond to the work which you are doing as a department and so on. When you deal with the economic issues, it's about facilitating uh, so that other sectors they can be able to strive. So it will always be difficult to touch and see the tangibles of it, but what you can only see is how the other sectors perform and how other related indicators uh, link to your business community, respond to the work which you are doing as a department and so on. But uh, coming exactly to your question is that uh, one of the key issues which we assist with uh, as a provincial government is that uh, over a long time, uh, we have not been focusing on what exactly uh, is going to be able to assist us to drive the economy. Uh, we've been focusing on the issues uh, which uh, are in a small scale. Whereas, uh, if you may know that uh, what is key for any economy to strive, uh, you need to industrialize. Well, uh, the state of the province addressed by the Premier was a balanced speech because it covers, it covered all the sectors of uh, the important sectors in the province. Uh, uh, to me in particular, uh, my interest is on the issue of tourism and biodiversity, of which these are issues uh, that amongst others she has covered. Uh, uh, the progress that we have made over the past uh, uh, five years and also the plans that uh, we are having as a province and the spin-offs that are coming out of the investment uh, that we made over the period of five years as the province of Mpumalanga. The emphasis has always been let's get biased towards development. Let's be biased towards delivery of services. Let's get biased towards uplifting the, 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 the lives of our people in an effort to overcome on the triple challenges as we normally put it. We have built 34,962 dwelling houses, 27,641 sites were serviced, and 34 units out of the community residential unit program for our people in this province alone, and more than 3 million all over the country. We have extended a social net to cover all those who are vulnerable, including people with disability, our youth, elder persons, women, and children. More than 90% of our people have access to water. Madam Speaker, our provincial road not network consists of 13,837 kilometers, of which 40 percent is paved and 60 percent is unpaved. Since 2014, 
the province has completed key priority transport infrastructure projects and also paid particular attention to preserving, maintaining its transport and road assets. This investment is critical to ensure a strong economy, create new jobs and create new resources to support societal change and development. In this regard, 8.5 billion has been invested in improving our road networks as follows. We've upgraded 73 kilometer of roads from gravel to surface roads. We've re-graveled about 2,827 kilometers of roads. We've reconstructed and rehabilitated a total of 558 kilometer of roads. We've reconstructed 617 kilometer of pole hole rates, roads in order to reduce vehicle operation costs for both pole holders and other users of the network. Sandral has commenced with work on the short and medium intervention to upgrade the Muloto Road, which is commonly known as R573. The contract awarded to the service product provider required that 20% of the value of the contract be subcontracted to local SMMEs. And approximately 500 million has been set aside to train local SMMEs and local labor on the existing construction project. A further 40.1 million has been spent and 129 work opportunities created for the community. The estimated number of job opportunities to be created by 2020 is 5,500. All these achievements happened despite the statistics indicating high youth unemployment rate of 43.5%, calling for a more innovative and collaborative partnership with the social and private sector. Now, coupled to that is the element of trying to empower small uh, businesses in the form of government nutrition programs that is targeting those schools as well as all other schools. And this program is meant to be uh, for uh, small businesses to participate on in order to grow the economy and to give the small operator an opportunity to be able to operate. Now, I've just given an example of schools. Talk of a uh, roads network. I am sure that it has been demonstrated again during state of the province address. There was an emphasis in this province to build up or upgrade gravel roads that are of an access nature, where you had villages inaccessible or difficult to access or for them to go to amenities just such as health facilities. Now, we have built roads in various places that were gravel and upgraded to surface for the peoples that people can now be able to move in that way. So it serves the social responsibility for all our communities. One of the things which we have done for the past uh, tenure of this uh, administration is that, uh, of course, focusing on industrialization <laughs> was that uh, how do we divide the province, uh, understanding it in terms of uh, where are the strongest sectors? For argument's sake, uh, what we have done is that uh, we look at your Hersi band and say we cannot be everywhere, but let us look in terms of what can stimulate the economy around there. Then we came to the conclusion that uh, Sassol is playing a very a key role in terms of uh, that particular part of the region. Hence, we came with the whole idea of what you call the petrochemical industrial technology park. Uh, which we then started to develop it, uh, which once we are able to develop it, it means that development uh, around that particular region will be based or will be starting, their starting point will be to say, how do we exploit the chemical uh, industry, uh, which is pro uh, possessed by a, a Sasol in that uh, part of our region and so on. So we've developed that, we've concluded that, and. Uh, Fortunately, the feasibility study came and said it's feasible. 
that uh, we can exploit that where we are talking about the issue of skills and also placement of young people. Um, if you look in terms of that project, it's got a potential because uh, we've managed to date, uh, just from November up to now, we've managed to package uh, 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 around 16,000 young people into the system. At the click of a button, you go to a municipality, you know which young people is there with what qualification. And secondly, they are also been trained in terms because we have realized that this issue of unemployment is not about only the issue that there are no job opportunities. It's also about the lack in terms of how they must present themselves and how they must package uh, their uh, CVs and the other things they are providing and so on. So that project is doing very well because we have managed to up just from uh, that time till now, 16,000 has been done and trained and as i'm talking uh, more than 200 already been placed on job opportunities uh, we are looking that probably end of march we will have placed a uh, 2000 we are hoping that post this administration that program is going to continue so that we are able now to assist these young people because not everyone wants to be in business um, as you would uh, understand that Mpumalanga is a province, it's a very rural province. So most of our people are striving on agriculture. As government, we then realized that there was a need for us to have a clear intervention or a strategy that would be developed to assist both our local farmers and those that are not necessarily in the agricultural sector, just to encourage them to be able to get into the sector. This province is known to be a rural province, Bumalanga generally. And, uh, but however, we have identified certain sectors that we know that the province can be able to excel on. We have uh, identified sectors such as agriculture, tourism, mining, and so forth. And we realize that we have the responsibility to create an enabling environment for the business out there, for the economy to begin to pick up and thrive. The training of farmers on agricultural skills continues to be the big key, key driver of our inter intervention in the sector. To this end, we have relaunched the Marapiano College and converted it into a farmer training center. In the past four years, we have managed to assist the farmers with plowing and planting their land totaling to 89,912 hectares, which has been lying fallow due to limited financial resources. Furthermore, government has collaborated with some of the commercial farmers and commodity associations to support intervention towards increasing the production level of the resource poor farmers. The province, con the province continues to establish and enhance the agro-processing facilities to assist farmers to benefit through the commodity value chain. To this end, the Ngomaz Red Meat Abattoir has been handed over to the beneficiaries to assist in processing their livestock and sell to the market. For grain farmers, two maize mills have been revitalized and equipped in Gomazi and Dr. Pixley Gaisa Kaseme. Other existing grain mills in our province are being rehabilitated. So most of our people are striving on agriculture. As government, we then realized that there was a need for us to have a clear intervention or a strategy that would be developed to assist both our local farmers and those that are not necessarily in the agricultural sector, just to encourage them to be able to get into the sector. So what we then proposed was a project that was focusing on the youth. After we received the statistics that indicate that the province is very young or youthful, we therefore felt that as a Department of Agriculture, it would be very important to bring the youth on board 
on issues of agriculture. As a result, development that has occurred found itself biased towards those kind of uh, sectors. Indeed, in our master plan for the province, on the economical side, we have prioritized the sectors. Now, in order for us to be able to work better in those sectors, we have done certain things. We have developed certain programs. In as far as agriculture is concerned, for instance, we came up with ideas such as incubating young people to get interested into agriculture and train in certain areas. We have a, a program called Fortune 40 that the Honorable Premier has also spoken about in the State of the Province Address, the kind of achievements that we have had in that area. This is but one of the programs that are found within the agriculture sector that has indeed turned things around. We are beginning to see young people getting hopeful that indeed there is something for us out there. We therefore identified farms that belong to government that were lying fallow over a number of years. We then had to start establishing those farmers from the scratch. We identified youth in different areas. I think it's important for me to indicate that some of those youth have never participated in agriculture before. We then formed them into cooperatives, placed them in the farms. It's also important that in agriculture, you are actually physically there to be able to know what needs to happen. The good thing about the project is that they were starting the farms from scratch. So we had to divide the project into three phases. The first part was dealing with infrastructure in the, in the farms, where we had to put up irrigation systems, where we had to put up uh, infrastructure in terms of animal handling facilities and the rest. At the same time, we needed the youth to be trained with accredited skills. So we roped in accredited companies that were also parallel going to train them so that at least when they finish this, they could be certificated. Then the last part, which is obviously the cultivation and the plowing of the farm. These youth have been placed on these farms and we are proud as a province to say that that land that was lying fallow, currently they are producing, they are selling, they are making their own money. In a way, we have been able to develop entrepreneurs in the agricultural sector. Well, of course, there were a lot of challenges. As you would know, when you establish a project, it's not easy. One of the challenges is for the youth to understand that in the agricultural sector, you need to work. Let me just give you one example. If you are to irrigate plants at 5 a.m. before, it's very hot so that at least the soil can be able to absorb the water. They had to learn to wake up and they needed to be there in the farm so that they can look after those plants. Plants become like your own child where you have to feed them, where you have to deal with diseases, where you have to deal with a number of things. So it needs a dedicated workmanship from the youth. We had to also train them on those things. In some areas, uh, we had to also look at the market itself which is something that is very, very difficult to find. So the youth had to also go out and try and find the market. But parallel to that, as government, we also opened avenues for them in terms of the market where we brought in the school nutrition program. Therefore, our, f our farmers, which are the youth farmers, are now supplying the government nutrition program which is your schools, your hospitals, and the rest in the province. So that at least whatever produce that they are producing can then be sold in the market and they can be able to make their own profit. I'm sure you, are, you know about the Mpumalanga uh, International Fresh Produce Market, uh, which we are building. But that International Fresh Produce Market, we are building it on what you call Agriculture Technology Park. So what we started with was to say what sector do we think can do very well in this part of uh, the province that agriculture come, uh, came uh, on top in particular the fresh produce and related products and so on so hence uh, we then uh, went through to identify that site uh, to develop your agriculture uh, technology uh, park uh, where currently we are building the international fresh produce market. But I am pleased that uh, under this one, there is already a, a foreign company which is also going to deal with your dry goods uh, uh, and so on. 
uh, they are they will be investing uh, more than uh, two billion uh, to that particular site side by side with our international fresh produce uh, market and so on then we will look in terms of uh, how do you define the economy of south africa because agriculture sometimes we limit it uh, to your fresh produce and the other crops uh, and so on whereas uh, forestry is also forming part of agriculture and if you look south africa because those are the basic things which we are trying to battle with if you look in south africa 40 percent of forestry are found in Pumalanga, which means Pumalanga is the biggest province uh, with forestry compared to all the provinces in the country now the issue is that but have we exploited forestry to be one of the key sector which we are able to develop as a province and the answer was no we have not done very well Hence, then we have come up with the forestry, forestry uh, technology uh, park, uh, which uh, the first one will be around the area of Sabi and so on, which were on the same uh, process uh, like your petrochemical one in terms of uh, finalizing the township uh, establishment. The province has invested 500 million rands for basic infrastructure and created approximately 300 jobs in the process. This market offers facilities to trade their fresh produce to local and international markets. As a province, we wish to extend our sincere gratitude to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, and his cabinet, particularly to the Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Rob Davis, for approving our application for the establishment of the SEZ. Indeed, we have been provided with a window of opportunity to change the economic landscape of the Ngomazi local municipality, of the province, of the entire country, and as well as the SADC region. We are calling upon the citizens of Mpumalanga to grab hold of this opportunity. The failure or success of this zone is dependent on all of us. Jointly, we must ensure that through this zone, through this zone, we roll back the frontiers of poverty. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we are calling upon our farmer community and agribusinesses to exploit the opportunities that will be presented by this economic zone. Uh, the country for some time, the, the prog a program of uh, your special economic zone, although uh, some time back they were called the industrial development zones uh, before it was changed to SEZ. Uh, now the good thing is that uh, uh, that criteria in terms of which provinces to benefit was changed. Originally uh, that program was benefiting provinces along the coast because of the proximity to uh, the coast and easy to export and import to using the ports and so on. But since that has been changed and then we chose as Mpumalanga to say we have been talking about this Maputo corridor and what exactly we're talking about when we're talking about Maputo corridor development because this Maputo corridor development it gave the province a competitive edge uh, in terms of accessing uh, your Maputo uh, port uh, in terms of export and import and so on. Hence, we then apply for the designation of the Nkomazi Special Economic Zone, uh, which as I'm, I'm sure you know by now that uh, the minister has already designated it. Now we're in a process of putting the proper structures so that we can start uh, to develop and see development going on there. Again, the pipeline of investment on the Gomazi SEZ is at the region of around more than 5 billion. And uh, some of these investors, uh, every day they are saying to us when they are going to start to do their work there because they are anxious in terms of starting uh, the work to happen. Uh, but as you may know that uh, we need to comply with the regulatory uh, processes uh, which we are busy with, which we have analyzed now. Now we'll be putting the structures in terms of uh, how do you put the proper structures for that commerce is that and be able to move forward. Remember that we are bothering two neighboring countries, which is Mozambique and Swaziland. Therefore, it also gives an opportunity for high quality produce 
that would be brought by the farmers to the agricultural hubs to then be also be sold to our neighboring countries, thus creating employment in the hub itself, but also creating business people within the farming sector, because our farmers will know exactly that when I plant a certain hectares, I'll be able to produce certain number of whatever commodity that they are planting, and it could then be sold in the in the in the country in the agricultural hubs that we have been able to build in the province. We've got three of them that uh, would soon be starting to run, which we have just completed. If we succeed on the petrochemical uh, technology park, the forest technology park, your agriculture technology park, and also your SEZ, it gives you the basis, of course, dealing also with the issue of the former high-fell steel in terms of uh, industrial park, so that we are able to exploit uh, your mining and, and technology around the area of uh, uh, Nkangal. Uh, because uh, a lot of mines are there, so you can see that uh, you need a lot of support around the mines in terms of that. So if we get it right, this fundamental, then it's going to be easy now to come to the secondary part. How then do you ensure that your SMMEs uh, development is linked to these basic industries uh, which we have created, uh, which I was talking about and so on? And if you look into that, the difficult thing is that uh, this is not a work of a year. Uh, it took uh, a long time in terms of starting from the feasibility studies because you must thoroughly do your research and so on. So on the basis of that, I think uh, this administration will have managed to move towards industrialization of the province uh, so that uh, we can be able to say indeed uh, Mpumalanga uh, is one of uh, the industrialized provinces. Madam Speaker, we resolve that in order to bring life to economic transformation through straight state procurement, government should do things differently by revisiting the terms enshrined in the state contracts. This implied that all contracts which have to do with nutritional needs of government departments and entities should be served through the different model which is known as the Government Nutritional Program. The GNP model seeks to empower and support the development of smallholder farmers within the pro province's agricultural sector. It is envisaged that through the model, we shall support smallholder farmers, local bakeries, as well as youth transport SMMEs whilst ensuring the supply and delivery of good quality fresh produce to our schools and our hospitals. As part of a measure to improve quality and to ensure that farmers meet the demands of the program, we have deployed agricultural extension officers to provide support to the smallholder farmers from the preparation of the soil up to the harvesting process. For you to be able to be a commercial farmer, you need to start somewhere. It's really hard work. So this is preparing our farmers because when you submit your produce to your local uh, agricultural hub, there's a certain criteria and standard that you have to meet. So we are training them so that as they cultivate, they would know exactly the certain grades that they must be able to produce. Once they get into the system of knowing that, then obviously we as government would have assisted them to come to a platform where they'll be able to multiply in terms of their produce and also compete as, as commercial farmers. That is where we're actually aiming. We are saying we are giving them all the production inputs from fertilizer to seedlings to everything. However, we need to also monitor them that they produce quality products that could be sold both locally and also internationally. Um, the other area of road network that we have looked at, and indeed pe uh, people may not realize that we have made strides in rebuilding, reconstructing and upgrading roads that's up that happen to be tourism roads. We can begin to highlight and indicate a number of those roads that are serving to bring in more tourists into our country, into our province. The need is more out there. 
this province is an attraction on tourism. Therefore, the need for more routes to be reconstructed is out there. We are not yet there, but as a lot and strides have been made in that instance. The tourism industry is one of the key economic drivers in our province. For every tourist that visits our shores, two or three jobs are created. Despite the global economic downturn, especially in Europe and Latin America, we have seen an increase of visitors from our own continent and those from Asia. The neighboring countries, Mozambique and Kingdom of Eswatini tourists form the largest number of visit visitors to our province. Along with the 2.4% uh, growth in foreign tourist arrivals nationally, the province has recorded an increase of 10.2% in foreign tourist arrivals, growing from 1,427,795 in 2016 to 1,573,635 in 2017. Domestically, there has been a sharp de decline of visitor numbers in the, in the last three years, as many South Africans cut back on traveling due to tough economic conditions. Our province received 1,226,000 trips in 2017, down from 1,658,000 trips in 2016. The total spent for the province during this period was over 8 billion against the target of 10 billion by the end of the current term. As you would know that tourism hinges on the availability of infrastructure to reach all our uh, tourist attraction areas. Uh, as you would know that uh, Mpumalanga province is endowed uh, with uh, the beauty of nature and uh, some of these areas uh, when are not easily accessible uh, due to the road conditions that we have in the potholes and uh, other related uh, challenges that uh, tourists, tourists would experience from time to time. Uh, the second uh, problem that uh, we encountered uh, over the period of five years is the issue of crime against uh, uh, tourists. Uh, that uh, we, we normally have uh, in the province where you would find that uh, there's one tourist uh, that has been marked uh, in one part of our province and uh, some of those uh, issues are issues that would go viral and uh, uh, they would reach uh, all corners uh, of, 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 of the globe and uh, in, in, in impacting on the number of tourists that are coming to our province. The fourth, of course, uh, is the issue of service delivery projects. Uh, we, we have encountered a number of uh, service delivery projects in and around, particularly uh, in uh, the uh, areas around uh, Bush Park Ridge, which is our access to the Kruger National Park, uh, in the areas of uh, uh, Matibiti and others where you have your Blade River Canyon, your God's Window and, and, and other areas. So as you have this service delivery protest, they are also serving as a deterrent in that tourists would think that it's a common occurrence, uh, uh, those that come at a time when uh, their service delivery protests would be discouraged from coming again and they would influence other people uh, uh, not to come. So those are some of uh, the challenges. The Premier addressed many of uh, these problems uh, because uh, some of these problems are impacting on our tourist arrivals, both domestic and international. And uh, we are looking at the uh, possible uh, interventions uh, that uh, would uh, try and reverse the trend of the decline, particularly when you talk about domestic arrivals. Um, the other area of road network that we have looked at, and indeed pe uh, people may not realize that we have made strides in rebuilding, reconstructing and upgrading 
roads that, are, that happen to be tourism roads. We can begin to highlight and indicate a number of those roads that are serving to bring in more tourists into our country, into our province. The need is more out there. This province is an attraction on tourism. Therefore, the need for more routes to be reconstructed is out there. We are not yet there, but as a lot and strides have been made in that instance. The issue around tourism, uh, as you may know, that uh, in terms of the figures, uh, just the recent one, uh, you will see that uh, we are number two as a province in tourism in the country. Uh, which will tell you that Mpumalanga will have a potential of tourism and so on. And uh, part of the issues which we then said we must be able to deal with, there are some small towns uh, which previously were the hub of uh, tourist attraction, like your pilgrim rest, your waterfall poven. Waterfall poven is beautiful, uh, now called Mkwani, uh, and so on. It's very beautiful. But I think uh, what we have not done was to develop proper business plan for it to maintain its glory uh, and continue to attract tourists as they are doing and so on. One of its many plans was to ensure diversity of arts, culture and heritage are exploited to its fullest capacity in order to realize the potential of this sector as a major contributor to building social coercion and economic development in Bumalanga and the rest of the country the province initiated the process of the establishment of the Mpumalanga Creative Industry Commission to be operational before the end of last year. Or so this was the plan. But what is the tourism industry doing to attract more arrivals? I think the challenge that we are having is what is it that we are doing to make sure that we improve the product so that there are new things that draw tourists to come to our province. Well, uh, the, the, the first achievement that one can speak to, we have been able to revamp some of uh, uh, our products. We, we have uh, revamped uh, the chalets at Manieleti Game Reserve. We have uh, new chalets there. We have uh, renovated uh, the old chalets. We have done the same thing at uh, Andover, we have got new chalets there, we have renovated the old chalets. We have uh, put a new caravan park at Manieleti. We have put uh, a new day visitor centre also at Manieleti. And we're saying these interventions on their own have got a capacity to draw more uh, tourists, particularly your domestic uh, tourists. And we are having new products on the pipeline uh, that are intended at ensuring that uh, going forward we have an even better tourism products that we are offering. Uh, there's also the gorge lift uh, that uh, was uh, completed uh, last year. It came into operation just at uh, uh, the uh, correct time uh, when uh, the festive season was starting. Uh, there's uh, bungee jumping, there's everything there. So those that have got an adrenaline rush, we have got a place for them. The other issue is that as Mpumalanga, I, I, I don't think that we have been marketing ourselves very well because this province played a key, a key crucial role during the liberation struggle. What we have done was that let us then develop the, what you call a liberation routes, which when a tourist come and want to understand how the struggle was waged in Bumala, as part of touring, they can be able to start the route and via all the towns. If you look at a town like Petal, Petal has played a very key strategic role during the liberation and so on, but that story has not been told much in terms of the role of Petal, even uh, your your secunda and the others uh, around the area of Khersiband. So we've developed that, uh, what we call the uh, liberation heritage route. I am pleased, Madam Speaker, to report to this gathering that the United Nations Education, Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization has finally approved our application 
for Babaton Makonjwa route to be declared a World Heritage Site. We expect a significant increase in the number of archaeologists and people with a keen interest in the origin of humanity to visit this new heritage site. We call upon our local people to position themselves and provide services that will include, amongst others, guest houses, tour guides, transport, and cultural activities. Madam Speaker, recently we completed the upgrading of a number of our tourism facilities as well as some of the roads that lead to tourist attraction centers. We are concerned though by the artificial barriers and gatekeeping that makes it difficult for SMMEs to gain entry into this industry. We call upon the industry regulators to remove these unnecessary barriers to empower our people and make this industry inclusive. But what can be done? to break these barriers and to improve youth employment in the province. The first one is that we are trying to impact on youth unemployment. So we are trying to absorb as many young people as is possible to the tourism industry through many projects. EP, EPWP link project where you are, we are using the YES project, uh, uh, youth empowerment uh, programs, in tourism, where some of them we use them as environmental monitors, others we use as a, a tourism monitors, so that uh, we ensure that uh, those that are working as environmental monitors, they are looking at uh, the fauna and flora. Uh, those that uh, are working as uh, tourism monitors, they are looking at uh, the issue of the protection and the safety of tourists. So all of uh, these uh, uh, programs are programs that are intended at ensuring uh, that young people are absorbed into the industry, they are introduced into the industry. And uh, last year we were even, uh, we, we, we even achieved a, a milestone in that we have sent two young people from the previous cities advantage communities to be pilots in the conservation uh, industry. It's, 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 it's one male and one female. They, they were doing their matric and after matriculating, we have taken them to uh, the, the, the pilot school and they would be finishing. And once they finish, they are coming to join the crop of rangers. And they are going to be the first two black uh, pilot rangers in the country. Your township tourism, we're trying to ensure that we, we, we promote uh, your, 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 your black establishment owners, your guest houses and, and others. We, we assist them through training, we assist them by exposing them to markets. Uh, we take them through to all exhibitions that we're having, both within the country and internationally as, 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 as MTPA with the support uh, that we get from government in order to ensure that uh, we level the playing field and uh, we give them access uh, to opportunities so that when your international tourists come, they not only go to your usual uh, establishments uh, that uh, uh, were used before, because as you would know that uh, your international tourists in particular, they would want uh, to experience a, 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 a different uh, a, 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 a offering. Yet the contributors to the province's economy do not just lie with the private sector. Uh, I think uh, those are the things which we have been trying to balance. But the exciting one is that we have conducted a study recently of your informal economy in the province. And it came up that is contributing more than three billion uh, in the economy of the province and so on. We want to make sure that uh, we create the necessary opportunities. We must also be able to support the informal economy, not to focus only on the formal economy. And the poster which uh, we have taken is that uh, don't always move fast to formalize the informal economy because they don't need to be formalized, they need to be supported. So, just to identify what support we need to do as government 
and be able for them to be able to strive and move forward because it's a huge economy if you can come and think of it if uh, they are around the three billion uh, per annum in the province and so on. Hence the various programs uh, which uh, we'll be developing or which we're trying to develop towards uh, to deal with the whole issue of uh, informal economy, uh, working with the municipalities because there you have the issue of bylaws and the regulations uh, which municipalities they normally deal with and so on which from time to time we've been intervening so that uh, that can be able to be dealt with and so on. But uh, so those are the things which we've been trying to deal with uh, in the nutshell. Uh, in terms of our entities, uh, I think we have tried our level best uh, within this period to bring back the good governance in our entities. Uh, I'm sure you are aware that today we're not talking about the liquor board, we're not talking about the gambling board, uh, because within a space of six months, we have managed to merge two entities into one to Mpumalanga Economic Regulator. And by now sitting here, we have the register of all the liquor outlet in the province. So I know that uh, if I go to this area, how many liquor outlets are there? And uh, we can be able to identify all those who are legal and, and those who are also illegal and so on, which I think is something which we have we have been battling with for some time, but now we have the register. All what we are going to do now moving forward is also to automate it so that uh, I don't have to go physical. What were some of the other achievements made so far? We have put up a lot of social uh, offices where Sasa, uh, the aged, are able to go and receive their uh, 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 pinch their pay payments, their stipends payments uh, under a shade. The kind of offices that we have put up in rural areas are things that people could not even think of that it would happen. Talk of the hospitals that we have put up here. In the capital, in, Bomo, uh, in uh, Bombela, known, uh, that used to be known as Nelspreit, the government has so far built, put up the highest building, floor for floor, highest building in a hospital as one of the facilities to cater for our people. So much or a number of billions have been allocated towards health facilities in the form of infrastructure, so much so that indeed in st at, at certain instances, private hospitals would then come into our public hospitals to utilize some of the facilities uh, that we have. There has been an emphasis to actually upgrade and even build uh, some of the health hospitals. And that, and at that we did not neglect uh, uh, villages in that we have built a number of uh, uh, community health uh, centers uh, that are feeding sometimes into these larger hospitals. Madam Speaker, as we continue to embark on this long and complex journey towards peace, reconciliation and stability, we will never tire in upholding the principles of unity in diversity based on the respect we have for one another and on the set of common shared values which forms the foundation of our endeavors to deepen social cohesion and reconciliation throughout our province. I thank you.